Okay, in this video we're going to look at a solution to question number B2 from the 2019 Putnam. So the question reads as follows. So we let a n be the sum as k goes from 1 to n minus 1 over sine of this quantity 2k minus 1 times pi over 2n and then cosine squared of k minus 1 over 2n times pi and cosine squared of k pi over 2n. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk about the strategy for this. So the strategy is going to be to use some trigonometric identities to rewrite the numerator in a way so that we cancel parts of the denominator and come up with a telescoping series. So the first thing that we want to look at is the following. So we'll use this identity which says 2 sine of theta times sine of phi equals to cosine of theta minus phi minus cosine of uh, theta plus phi. So this will allow us to write our sine in the numerator in terms of cosines in the numerator. Now the next thing we want to do is write those cosines in terms of cosine squareds and for that we'll use the following identity. So we'll use this one which says cosine of 2 um, and I need a new angle measurement so I'll call it psi equals 2 cosine squared of psi minus 1. Okay, good. So now the idea is to use these two identities to rewrite the numerator in terms of cosine squared type objects. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is use the first identity with theta equals to 2k minus 1 times pi over 2n and then phi equals uh, pi over 2n. So obviously we have to choose theta or phi to be equal to one of these and so theta is equal to the one that we're given and then phi is something that we're introducing into the setup. And notice this phi does not depend on k which is also important for simplification in the sum later. Okay, now plugging this value for theta and phi into this first identity gives us 2 times sine of 2k minus 1 times pi over 2n times sine of pi over 2n equals cosine of theta minus phi. So let's see what that gives us. That gives us 2k minus 2 times pi over 2n and then minus uh, cosine of theta plus phi. So notice that's going to be cosine of 2k pi over 2n. Okay, so we get those two objects. Notice we can rewrite the angle in this first one as 2 times k minus 1 times pi over 2n. Okay, good. But notice that's exactly twice what we have uh, in the argument of this cosine squared. And then furthermore, this entry is exactly twice of what we have in this cosine squared. So now what we can do is we can apply this second identity to simplify these two. So let's see what we get when we do that. So that's going to give us cosine squared. And then I guess I should have a 2 here. So we'll have 2 cosine squared. And then we'll have half of these angles. So that will be k minus 1 times pi over 2n minus 1. But I'm going to leave the minus 1 off because that will cancel when we uh, rewrite this one. And then we'll have minus <coughs> cosine squared of half of that angle. So that's going to give us uh, k times pi over 2n. So now, just to reiterate what we did right here, so let's label this maybe uh, identity 1, and we used identity 1 to rewrite this first line. We were motivated to look at this by the fact that our numerator already contains this first term, and then next we used this second identity to rewrite the blue underline as this thing that includes cosine squareds. 
Okay, so now let's briefly talk about the motivation here. So that allows us to write something that includes our numerator in terms of things that are, include our denominator. And also notice we can cancel these twos and we can easily divide by the sine of pi over 2n to get our numerator in terms of these cosine squareds. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll write that equation down. So now using these identities we've rewritten the numerator of this fraction that's in this sum as follows. So we have this 1 over sine pi over 2n times cosine squared of this term minus cosine squared of that term. And so that's really great because now we can rewrite our a n term as 1 over sine pi over 2n. Notice I can take that out of the sum that's dividing a n because it doesn't depend on k. And now we have the sum k equals 1 to n minus 1 and we can have um, cosine squared k minus 1 over 2n times pi minus cosine squared k pi over 2n, and that's over the product of those terms. So here we have cosine squared k minus 1 over 2n times pi um, times cosine squared k pi over 2n. Now, the next thing we can do is split that up and cancel, and that's going to give us 1 over sine pi over 2n, and now we have the sum k equals 1 to n minus 1 of 1 over, so in the first part, this is going to cancel, so we'll have cosine squared k pi over 2n, uh, minus, and in the second part, this, these last two terms are going to cancel, and that's going to give us 1 over cosine squared k minus 1 over 2 in all times pi. Okay, good. So that's within our summation. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board. I'll bring this version of a into the top, and then we'll simplify it. So I've moved my new version of a n to the top, and notice I have it's 1 over sine uh, pi over 2 n times this sum from k equals 1 to n minus 1 of these this, this difference of these two terms, and I've called that entire sum b n, and now let's simplify this b n. So I'm going to split it up into two sums. So here we're going to have uh, the sum k equals 1 to n minus 1, 1 over cosine squared k pi over 2n minus the sum uh, k equals 1 to n minus 1 of 1 over cosine squared k minus 1 over 2n all times pi. And now notice that these are just one step away from each other. So this has a k minus 1 and this has k. So that motivates the fact that we can re-index them into each other. If we take the first term out of this sum and we'll take the last term out of this sum. Great. So if we take the last term out of this sum, this will become the sum k equals 1 to n minus 2 of 1 over cosine squared k pi over 2n plus the very last term. So notice that last term is 1 over cosine squared n minus 1 times pi over 2n. And now we have, this is going to be minus what we get from this sum where we take out the first term. So let's take out the first term. That'll be the k equals 1 term. So notice if we put k equals 1 into this, we get cosine squared of 0, which is 1. So the first term of that sum is just 1. Good. And then plus the sum k equals 2 to n minus 1 of 1 over cosine squared k minus 1 over 2n times pi. So now notice we can do some re-indexing here. So maybe we'll leave this one as is. And in this case, let's replace k with k plus 1. 
And notice that's going to turn this sum into the sum k equals 1 to n minus 1 of 1 over cosine squared k over 2n times pi. But now notice that that makes this first and this last big sum cancel. And that leaves us with only these two terms. So we've telescoped our sum. So I'll write that as minus 1 plus 1 over cosine squared n minus 1 times pi over 2n. Great. And let's recall that that is the value of bn that we've just calculated. And bn is this portion of an. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board. I'll bring this version of bn up to the top, which gives us this new version of an, and then we'll continue on. So on the previous board, we argued that we were able to telescope our sum of an into this form. So we've got 1 over this sine term, and then minus 1 plus 1 over this cosine squared term. And so now the next thing that we want to notice is that this argument right here is exactly equal to um, pi over 2 minus pi over 2n. Great. But that's going to allow us to rewrite cosine squared of n minus 1 over 2n times pi as cosine squared of pi over 2 minus pi over 2n. So that's just rewriting that argument. But now since cosine is an even function, we're squaring it also, so that doesn't really matter. We can uh, negate the inside and get the same thing. In other words, switch these. So that's going to give us cosine squared of pi over 2n minus pi over 2. But now we can use the fact that cosine and sine are just shifts of each other by pi over 2. And so that's exactly equal to sine squared of pi over 2n just by simple trigonometric identity. So now what we can do is we can move this value of this cosine squared term up here, and that's really great because that matches with this thing that's outside of the parentheses. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and I'll move this up. Okay, so we have a, finally have a useful form of a n that we can use to calculate this limit. So now let's go ahead and calculate this limit. So let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over n cubed. So that's going to give us uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n cubed over sine cubed pi over 2n. And so I get that term by distributing across to the second term in the sum, and I have that's minus 1 over n cubed over sine of pi over 2n. <clears throat> Okay, good. So that's the limit that I want to calculate. Now I'm going to do a change of variables in this limit. I'm going to set x equal to pi over 2n. So that's the argument of sine. But now notice that means n equals pi over 2x, which turns this limit into the following. So that's going to give us the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 8 over pi cubed. So we get that from both of these terms in the numerator. And now we have x cubed over sine cubed x. Good. And then minus x cubed over sine of x, but I'm going to write that in a slightly different way, x squared over x sorry, times x over sine x. Now the next thing that we're going to use is a fact from calculus 1 that the limit as x goes to 0 of x over sine x equals 1. So that tells you that this is going to go to 1. This term right here is also going to go to 1, but this is attached to something that is tending towards 0. Great, which tells us our limit in the end is 8 over pi cubed. Okay, good. And that's the final answer.